My love languages are saving money, food, and acts of service. But saving money and date night sometimes means that you have to stay at home. For me personally, I love a home cooked meal rather than going out to eat. So in today's video, I have three budget friendly keto recipes that go from easy to extra. We are going to get started with the easiest recipe of this video and it's going to be a cream cheese jalapeno chicken bake. Very minimal ingredients all in one dish. It comes together in no time at all and it has so much flavor. To start off, we are going to add in one block or eight ounces of cream cheese. I've had mine sitting out on the counter so that it can get a little bit melted. To this, add in one tablespoon of diced jalapenos. Pour in one can of diced chilies. Now, if you don't like a lot of spice, you could definitely just do half of a can. So that would be two ounces instead of four ounces. For our seasonings, we're gonna use a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a half teaspoon of onion powder, a fourth teaspoon of cumin, a fourth teaspoon of chili powder, a fourth teaspoon of seasoned salt, and a fourth teaspoon of pepper. I'm just gonna mix this all together, and it may take just a little bit if your cream cheese isn't softened all the way. You could probably do this with a hand mixer, but just doing it with a regular spatula is perfectly fine. With my cream cheese all mixed together, just set that to the side, and we're gonna add our chicken breast into our casserole dish. Now these look a little weird because they are actually frozen from a bag chicken breast. I actually picked up these chicken breasts so that whenever my husband is away, I don't have to like thaw out a whole pack of chicken breasts. I can just do some individual ones whenever I feel like it. But we are just going to spread over our cream cheese mixture, making sure that each chicken has enough on them. You could definitely have seasoned your chicken. I was actually gonna put some salt and pepper. I actually just forgot about that, <laughs> but that is perfectly fine because I think that this cream cheese mixture has plenty of salt and pepper in it. So let's just cover this more on this side. Of course, this cream cheese is going to melt, so it's going to get into the bottom of the pan too and kind of soak up into this chicken breast, which will be grand. This smells really good. Those jalapenos and green chilies are amazing together. Okay, so now at this point, you could definitely do shredded pepper jack or Monterey Jack, but I'm just going to do the Monterey Jack with jalapeno peppers from HEB, like the slices, because that is what I already have opened. So I'm just gonna put two on that side and two on this side. Press those down. But I have my oven preheated at 375 and we are gonna cook this for about 35 to 45 minutes just until our chicken is completely done. While the chicken is going, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the dishes and put away all of the ingredients because we know nobody feels like doing dishes after you get done eating and it is a date night. So go ahead and set your table. That way you can enjoy dinner with your partner and then afterwards you can just relax for the rest of the evening. All right, it was in the oven at 375 for 36 minutes. It smells so good, it is so cheesy. Like I said, all that cheese just melted down there to the bottom, so these chicken breasts are gonna be so moist. Let's go ahead and take them out and cut into one. Oh yeah, nice and cooked and super juicy, super easy to put together. I am actually going to serve mine with two Carb Smart tortillas and wrap that up. You could add some sour cream or even some pico to this, but this chicken is super moist and it has so much flavor. Meal number two, we are spicing it up with this Cajun shrimp and sausage dish. You're gonna need one red bell pepper, three cloves of garlic, and half of an onion. To a hot skillet, add in one tablespoon of butter. Then you're gonna need one pound of shrimp. I only had a few shrimp left, so I'm just gonna use up what I had. Let this cook just for a few minutes and then add in 14 ounces of sausage. Again, I'm using some leftover jalapeno sausage that I had in my fridge just to get that cleared out because we do not waste food around here. Let this cook for a few minutes until everything is nice and heated. For our seasonings, I have two tablespoons of the Tony's Bold seasoning and then half a teaspoon of onion powder 
and then one four teaspoon of parsley. Mix this together. Now the seasonings did stick to the bottom of my skillet because I didn't have enough liquid, but it is fine. We're gonna add in about a half a teaspoon of some butter just to let that melt down and get everything scraped off the bottom of the pan. Once your sausage and your shrimp are fully cooked, we're just gonna remove them from our skillet and set that to the side. Add in one tablespoon of butter and let this melt down. Cook down your onions and your garlic until they are translucent and then add in your red bell pepper. Give this a good stir. I like my red bell pepper a little bit crispier, but you can cook it for as long as you would like. Once cooked down, add in one third cup of vegetable broth, and then pour in one and three fourths cup of heavy whipping cream, stirring this together, making sure you get all the seasonings from the bottom. Now for your cheese, you will need one half cup of grated Parmesan. I didn't have enough, so I am adding a little bit of some sharp cheddar. And of course, I had to have a helper pour the cheese in, and yeah, she uh, spilled most of it, but it is totally okay. I might ask her to come back and help me cook some more but you're gonna just melt your cheese turn this on to a simmer just for a few minutes that way everything can get nice and melted and bubbled up once that is finished we are gonna add back in our sausage and shrimp and then just stir this together until everything is fully combined this was honestly my favorite meal out of this entire video y'all know I love sausage anything cheesy anything spicy absolutely loved this one. I finished it off with a little bit of parsley and this turned out so, so good. It definitely had some leftovers too. We have officially reached meal number three. This is our extra meal. I wouldn't necessarily say that this meal is hard to cook, but there is a lot more prep work to it. For our meat, we are gonna be using this flank steak. I have actually never cooked with one before, but I got it on clearance, so I could not pass that up. And then we have a red and green bell pepper that we are gonna slice up. I have already portioned out all my seasoning, so when we get to this step, I'll just list it out for you guys. I have some purple onion already chopped up, but you could definitely use white. I just wanted to use what I already had. So let's get everything chopped up and get our flank steak seasoned. But we are just going to cut our bell peppers into strips because we are actually going to be rolling these bell peppers in our flank steak and making almost like a flank steak roll kind of. So I may not use all of the bell pepper, but I am gonna go ahead and cut it up. So I can have it ready for any other recipe that I may need it in. The red is done. Let me know in the comments down below if y'all are more of a red bell pepper fan or a green bell pepper. I've actually found that I really enjoy the red bell pepper more. I just think it has a little bit more of a bolder flavor to it, but in the green bell pepper is just a little bit sweeter to me. All right, so let's set our bell pepper to the side and get started seasoning our flank steak. For seasonings, I have half a teaspoon of chili powder, paprika, cumin, garlic powder, dried oregano, salt and pepper, and then one fourth teaspoon of cayenne powder. You could definitely add more seasonings if you would like. I am just following the recipe that I will have listed down below for you guys. So I've just seasoned the meat. I'm gonna go ahead and cut down the veggies. I just have a tablespoon of butter, but you could definitely use olive oil if you would like. We're gonna go ahead and cut down our peppers. I did get my onions just a little bit brown, but that is perfectly fine. I kind of got uh, distracted on vintage Instagram live sales. If you are a vintage lover like me and you've never shopped on Instagram live and you would like to know more about it, let me know in the comments down below because that in Goodwill is the way that I have decorated the majority of our new house. And I am in love with that style. With our peppers done, we are gonna get to tucking and rolling. So my grain is laying this direction instead of sideways. So I am just going to be placing my peppers in like this, and then we are gonna be rolling from right to left instead of from front to back, like the original 
like the original recipe had it. I'm gonna make sure that we're leaving enough space on this side that I can get a nice grip on it to be able to roll, to add a little bit more of the green on this side. And then you could definitely use any type of cheese. I'm using this Mexican style from Kroger just so I can get it out of my fridge because I don't have a whole lot of left. And I've actually sort of stopped using bag cheese because of all like the extra stuff in it. I really like to just buy block cheese and shred it myself. Just do a little bit more over here. All right, so I'm just gonna get a grip underneath and then try, the peppers are warm so be cautious but I'm just going to kind of tuck them under, make sure I'm tucking on the sides, just like that. Now, you're supposed to be putting long toothpicks in this. I don't have long toothpicks, so I'm just going to be putting in a couple of these smaller ones. Let me flip it so that the crease is on top. Stick that all the way through if I can. All right, so this is this right here is going to be like one piece. These are gonna be a little bit bigger than expected, but that is fine. Okay, so for the cut, I'm gonna go right above that first toothpick. Hi, Bear. So mine are definitely gonna be a lot thicker than the original ones. That is okay. So into my cast iron skillet, it is warmed up. I'm gonna add in a tablespoon of butter to cook our steaks in. So once that's melted, I'm gonna go in with our first steak. We were just looking to get this seared on each side, get a nice color. And then depending on how you like your steak cooked, you can go ahead and put it in the oven at 350 for 10 minutes. That's what I'm gonna go ahead and do because these do seem a little bit thicker. But if you like your steaks more on the rare side, you could definitely just cook it in the skillet. Getting a nice brown color on that side. Just gonna go ahead and flip them. With this meal being the extra meal, it's not really hard to cook. It's just like I said, all the extra prep. But it seems pretty simple. It's coming together in no time at all. Maybe 30 minutes by the time you get everything kind of cut up and rolled up. I'm gonna throw in the little pieces for my daughter and go ahead and get those cooked up so that she can go ahead and eat because nothing says date night like having a little one at home. <laughs> and then I'm gonna place these into the oven. That is at 350 for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, I went ahead and took it out of the oven. It looks so good. It's nice and juicy. Let's go ahead and cut into one and see how they turned out. It has a little bit of pink. It is not overdone, so this is nice and juicy. Let's go ahead and try it. That was really, really good. The cheese and that pepper mixed together, that steak had so much flavor with all of those seasonings. Definitely make this one for your partner. It does not have to be a date night. Make them feel special every night. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you need some more dinner ideas, check out this video here and I'll catch you guys there.